So now let's consider the following scenario. You have developed an application feature, you have tested it, and now you're ready to deploy it, right? To deploy it, your application should be packaged into its own Docker container. So this means that we are gonna build a Docker image from our JavaScript Node.js backend application and prepare it to be deployed on some environment. To review this diagram that we saw at the beginning of the tutorial, so we have developed a JavaScript application, we have used the MongoDB Docker container to use it, and now it's time to commit it to the Git, right? So in this case, we're gonna simulate these um, uh, steps on the local environment, but still, I'm gonna show you how these steps actually work. Um, so after commit, you have a continuous integration that runs. So the question is, what does actually Jenkins do with this application? When it builds the application, so the JavaScript application using the uh, NPM build, etc., it packages it then in a Docker image and then pushes it into a Docker repository. So we're gonna actually simulate uh, what Jenkins does with their application and how it actually packages it into a Docker image on the local environment. So I'm gonna do all this on my laptop, but it's basically the same thing that Jenkins will do. And then on later step, we're gonna push it, um, we can actually push the built image into a Docker repository. In order to build a Docker image from an application, we basically have to um, copy the contents of that application into the Docker file. It could be an artifact that we built. In our case, we just have three files, so we're gonna copy them directly in the image and we're gonna configure it. And in order to do that, we're gonna use a blueprint for building images, which is called a Docker file. So let's actually see what is a Docker file and how it actually looks like. So as I mentioned, Dockerfile is a blueprint for creating Docker images. A syntax of a Dockerfile is super simple. So the first line of every Dockerfile is from image. So whatever image you are building, you always want to base it on another image. In our case, we have a JavaScript application uh, with Node.js backend. So we are gonna need Node in, inside of our container so that it can run our node application instead of basing it on a Linux Alpine or some other lower level uh, image because then we would have to install node ourselves on it. So we are taking a ready node image and in order to see that let's actually go to Docker Hub and um, search node here and here you see there is a ready node image that we can base our own image from. So here we have a lot of different tags, so we can actually use one specific one or we can just go with the latest if we don't specify any tag. So what that actually means, basing our own image on a node image, is that we are gonna have node installed inside of our image. So when we start a container and we actually get a terminal of the container, we can see that node command is available because there is node installed there. This is what from node actually gives us. So the next one is we can configure environmental variables inside our Docker file. Now, as you know, we have already done this in the using the Docker run commands or the Docker compose. So this will be just an alternative to defining environmental variables in a Docker Compose, for example. I would say it's better to define the environmental variables externally in a Docker Compose file, because if something changes, you can actually override it. You can change the Docker Compose file and override it instead of rebuilding the image. But this is an option. So this env command basically would translate to setting the environmental variables inside of the image environment. The next one is run. So all these capital case words that you see from env and run, they're basically part of a syntax of a Docker file. So using run 
basically you can execute any kind of Linux commands. So you just see make directory is a Linux command that creates a home slash home slash app um, directory. Very important to note here. This directory is going to live inside of a container. So when I start a container from this image, the ho slash home slash app directory will be created inside of the container and not on my laptop, not on the host. So all these commands that you have in Dockerfile will apply to the container environment. None of them will be affecting my, my host environment or my laptop environment. So with run, basically you can execute any Linux commands that you want. So that's probably one of the most used ones. And we also have a copy command. Now you would probably ask, I can execute a copy command, a Linux copy command using run. Yes, you could. But the difference here is that, as I said, all these commands in run, for example, they apply to, they get executed inside of the container. The copy command that you see here, it actually uh, executes on the host. And you see the first parameter is dot and the second parameter is slash home slash app. So source and the target. So I can copy files that I have on my host inside of that container image. Because if I were to execute run CP um, source destination, that command would execute inside of the Docker container. But I have the files that I want to copy on my host. And the last one, so from and CMD or command is always part of Docker file. What command does is basically executes an entry point Linux command. So this line with the command actually translates to node server JS. So remember here, we actually do node server JS. So we execute, so we start a node server with the node JS. This is exactly what it does, but inside of the container. So once we copy our server JS and other files inside of a container, we can then execute node server JS. And we are able to do it because we are basing on the node image that already has node pre-installed. And we are going to see all this in action. So another question here, what is the difference between run and CMD? You could, I could also say run node server JS. The difference again is that CMD is an entry point command. So you can have multiple run commands with uh, different Linux commands, but CMD is just one. And that marks for Docker file that this is the command that you want to execute as an entry point. So that basically runs the server and that's it. So now let's actually create the Docker file. And just like the Docker compose file, Docker file is part of the application code. So I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to paste here the contents. So again, we are basing off node um, image and actually instead of just having the latest node, I'm going to specify a node version. So I'm going to take 13 minus Alpine. So all these that you see here are tags. So I can use any of them as a tag. So I'm going to say 13 minus Alpine like this. So this is going to be a specific node image that I'm going to use as my base image. Let's actually stop here for a moment and take a little bit of a deep dive on this line. So since we saw that a Docker file is a blueprint for every, for any Docker image. That should actually mean that every Docker image that there is on Docker Hub should be built on its own Docker file, right? So if we actually go to, um, let, let's actually look at one of the latest versions, which is 13 minus Alpine, and then let's click inside. And as you see, this specific image has its own Docker file. And here, as you see, we have the same from that we just saw. And this is what this node official image is based off, which is a base image Alpine 3.10, right? And then we have this environmental variable set and all these Linux commands using run. 
and some other environmental uh, variable and you have this entry point which is a script so you can also execute the whole shell script instead of instead of separate commands and you have this final command right so you don't have to understand any of this i just want to demonstrate that every image is based of another base image right so in order to actually visually comprehend how this uh, e layer stacking works with images. Let's consider this uh, simplified visualization. So our own image that we're building, app uh, with the version 1.0, is going to be based on a node image with a specific version. That's why we're going to specify from node 13 Alpine. And the node 13 Alpine image, as we saw in the Docker file, is based on Alpine base image with the version 3.10. That's why it specifies from Alpine 3.10. So Alpine is a lightweight base image. Then we install Node on top of it and then we install our own application on top of it. And basically this is how all the images are built. So now let's go back and complete our Docker file. So we have the uh, from specified. We have the environmental variables specified. And in just a second, we're going to actually see these commands in action. So let's copy that. And this is also very important. Docker file has to be called exactly like that. You can't just give it any name. It is always called Docker file, starting with a capital D. And that's it. It's a simple text file. So just save it like this. And here you even see the highlighting and this Docker um, icon. So now that we have a Docker file ready, let's see how to actually use it. So how do we build an image out of it? So in order to build an image using a Docker file, we have to provide two parameters. <clears throat> One is we want to give our image a name and a tag, just like all the other images have. So we are going to do it using minus T. So we're going to call our image my app and we're going to give it a tag of 1.0. The tag could be anything. You can even call it actually version one. It wouldn't matter. So we're going to do 1.0. And the second required parameter actually is a location of a Docker file because we want to tell Docker here, build an image using this Docker file. And in this case, because we're in the same, uh, folder as the docker file we're just going to say current directory when we execute this we're going to see that image is built and this is an id of the image that was built because i already have node 13 alpine on my laptop um, this just use the the one i have lying around locally for you if it's the first time you will actually see that it's pulling node image from the docker hub so now with the Docker images, I can actually see that my image is here. It says created two days ago. I don't know why, but anyways, so I have the image name, which is this one here. And I have the name of the image and the tag of the image. So if we go back to this uh, diagram that we saw in the review, so basically we've gone all these steps or we have simulated some of the steps. We've built the JavaScript application using a Docker co containers. And once the, the application is ready, uh, let's say we made the commit and we're, we just simulated what Jenkins server also does. So what Jenkins does is actually it takes the Docker file that we create. So we have to commit the Docker file into the repository with the code and Jenkins will then build a Docker image based on the Docker file. And what is an important point here is that usually you don't develop alone. You are in the team. So other people might want to have access to that up to date image of your application that you developed. It could be a tester maybe who wants to pull that image and test it locally or you want that image to be deployed on a uh, development server, right? And in order to do that, you have to actually share the image. So it is pushed into a Docker repository. And from there, either people can take it, for example, a tester maybe want to 
download the image from there and test it locally, or a development server can actually pull it from there. So let's actually just run a container. I'm just gonna say docker run, the image name obviously, and a tag like this. And in this case, I'm not gonna specify any other options because we just want to see what's going on inside of the container. So I'm just gonna run it. Okay, so the problem is that it can't find the server.js file, which is actually logical because uh, we are not telling it to look in the correct directory. So since we are copying all the resources in this home slash home slash app directory, server.js is gonna be there as well. And this is another topic. Whenever you adjust a Docker file, you have to rebuild an image because the old image cannot be overwritten, so to say. So what I'm gonna do now is actually, I'm gonna delete the one that I built. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually take the image. This is how you delete an image. But, but I can delete it because as it, as it says, the Docker is used by a stopped container. So if I do docker ps minus a, actually let's grab to my app like this. I have to first delete the container. So this is how you delete a container. It's docker rm. And once I've deleted the container, I can delete an image. So the image deletion is rmi like this. So if I do images now, I see my image isn't there. Okay, so we've modified the Docker file. So let's rebuild it now. So Docker build again. And let's see, the image is here. So let's start it again. So it's my app 1.0 and let's run it. And as you see, the problem is fixed, app listening on port 3000. So our app is running. So this one here, my app 1.0. First of all, we can see the logs here, like this. We see that the app is listening on port 3000. We know everything is cool. To actually just get a little bit more inside, let's uh, enter the containers or, or let's get, get the terminal the command line terminal of the container and look around there. So I'm gonna say docker exec interactive terminal. I'm gonna specify the container ID bin bash like this. And since bin bash doesn't work, we can actually try shell. So this is something you will also encounter because some uh, containers do not have bash installed so we have to connect using uh, bin sh so one of them has to work always so let's see in which directory we are so we are in the root directory and we see our virtual file system there and as you see the cursor changed as well so that means we're inside of a container so now let's actually check some of the stuff so first of all we specified some environmental variables here in the Docker file. And this means that these environmental variables have to be set inside the Docker environment. So if we do env, we actually see the MongoDB username, this one here, and MongoDB password are set. And there are some other environmental variables automatically set, we don't care about them. So another thing we can check is this directory because remember, because with this line, we actually created this slash home slash app directory. So let's see slash home slash app. And as you can see, the directory was created. And with the next line, we copied everything in the current folder. So if we actually go and see reveal in finder. So this is where the Docker file resides. So basically we copied everything that is inside of this directory, so all of this into the container. Now, we don't actually need to have Docker file and Docker compose and uh, this other stuff in here because the only thing we need are the JavaScript files 
or if we build a JavaScript application artifact, just the artifact. So let's go ahead and uh, improve that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app directory and I'm going to copy just the files that I'm going to need for um, starting an application inside of a container. So I'm going to take those and the images as well. So all these are just external ones. We don't need them there. And images, the index.html file, package.json, server.js, and the node modules are inside of app. So what we can do it now is instead of copying the whole directory where, where the Docker file is, I just want to copy all the contents of app folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say copy all the app contents. And again, because we modified a Docker file, we need to recreate the image. In order to leave the Docker container terminal, you can actually exit. So now we are on the host again. So if I do Docker images, again, I have to first delete the container and then image. But in order to delete the container, I have to first stop it. So now I can remove the container. And now I can actually remove the image that the container was based on. And let's check again. So let's ex execute that build command again. So now that we have the image built, let's actually run it. So I'm going to say my app 1.0. And of course I could have executed with a minus D in a detached mode, it doesn't matter now. And if I do a Docker PS, I see my um, image container running. And now let's actually enter the container again. So T and as we learned, it was in SH. And again, we're going to see the home app and here we just have the contents of app directory. So no unnecessary Docker file, Docker compose, etc. files, which is actually how it's supposed to be. Or as I said, um, because I just had a couple of files here, I copied all of them. But usually if you have this huge application, you would want to compress them and package them into an artifact and then copy that artifact into a uh, Docker image container. Okay, but as I said, this was just for demonstration purposes, because I just wanted to show you um, how you can actually start it as a container and how it should look inside. And in this case, we improved a couple of things, but usually we would start this container from a Docker Compose as well, together with all the other Docker images that the application uses. And it also doesn't have any ports open. So uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So in the next video, we're actually going to see how to create a private repository and how to push images into that private repository. Again, we're going to simulate this from a local environment. So I'm going to execute these comments from my laptop. But this is exactly the same commands that Jenkins server will execute. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.